Hey y'all, it's Kelly with Premium Fontent. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to make fawn ears and sew them into a wig. First, let's talk about supplies. For this process, you'll need faux fur that matches your legs, and optionally, you can use an accent color for the inside of the ear. You'll also need foam. The thickness of the foam is up to you, but keep in mind that you'll have to sew through it, so thicker foam may pose a challenge. Another optional supply is our fawn ear pattern, available on our website or in our Etsy shop. We have links below in the video description. You'll also need a craft knife and protective cutting surface, snips or scissors, and a comb. If you have one, an electric hair trimmer is very useful for this tutorial, but it's not required. If possible, you'll want a variety of guards so you can trim at different lengths. You may also choose to use a spray adhesive, but again, this is an optional supply. You'll need thread that matches your fur, a curved needle, pins or fabric clips, and ideally a sewing machine. Finally, you'll want a paint to shade the inner ear along with a paintbrush, something to protect your work surface, and mixing cups. Let's dive in! The first step is to cut out your pattern. If you're drafting your ears from a custom pattern, I recommend taking some time to play around with the size and shape to find the best fit for your fawn's look. With the pattern pieces cut out, it's time to cut out our foam and fur. You can use scissors to cut out your foam inserts, but for the fur, it's recommended to use a craft knife. It makes the process go a lot faster and you have less shedding. You can, of course, use snips or scissors, but you'll want to take your time and be careful to only cut the fur backing fabric. It's important to note that the inside pieces for your ears, or the pieces that will face forward or outward, will need to be flipped up or paired to the opposite back piece so that the pattern pieces line up correctly. With all of the pieces cut out, it's time to pin or clip the fur pieces together. Matching up the two sides of each ear, brush the fur fibers inward toward the center and pin or clip the pieces along the edge. I like to place a pin or two in the center to keep the fur from shifting around too much as I pin. Be careful at the tip of the ear. Remember, the more fur fibers you get tucked in, the less combing you have to do later. Once everything is pinned, it's time to sew. I'm sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance. Sew from one end of the flat side all the way around to the other. Once you're done sewing, you can snip at the curves and the tip of the ear to help the ears lay better. Once the ears are sewn and the seam allowances are clipped, turn them right side out. we're going to insert the foam. Now our ears are starting to take shape. It's time to trim down the faux fur. 
Trimming helps to add definition to the ears and gives it a more realistic appearance. If you have hair clippers, you'll want to start with a longer guard and work your way shorter. Remember, you can always cut more fibers off, but you can't add them back. If you have scraps of fur, I recommend practicing with the guards and clippers to get a better feel for how to trim the fur to the length and look you want. Throughout the trimming process, take your time. You may remember that when sewing fawn legs, we have you comb out the seams. I actually recommend that for the ears, you don't fully comb them out until you're trimming the fur. That way, in case you accidentally trim the edges more than you intended, you have some backup fibers along the seams that you can brush out and use to smooth out or cover up the seams. If you're using scissors or snips, the trimming process is going to take a fair bit longer, but you have more precision over what you're cutting. You can also use scissors or snips to smooth out areas if, even if you are using the electric trimmers.
the game. It's a rich thing. Once you've trimmed down the fur to the look that you want, it's time to glue the foam inserts in place. This is an optional step, but it's going to give you a more realistic look and give your ears a more polished shape. To glue your ears down, take a spray adhesive and spray it into the ear pocket between the front fur and the foam insert. Follow the directions on the glue as far as pressing into place or curing time for the glue. Once the glue is good to go, you'll notice that the ear holds a much better curve on the inside. Now it's time for shading. You want to use an acrylic paint that's a bit watered down. I'm just using a dash of paint with a very wet brush and carefully brushing it onto the fur. For the first coat, I go in the direction of the fur, starting at the inner ear and working my way out. This gives you a nice, easy gradient. Once I have the first coat down, I like to I like to go back and work the paint into the fur a bit more by brushing back and forth, then combing it smooth to remove any clumps. Depending on how much water was in your paint, this step may take more time to dry. If you're in a hurry, you can use a hair dryer on a low heat and low intensity to speed up the drying process. Once your ears are shaded and dried, it's time to sew them into your wig. I'm using a brown thread that matches my fur and wig with a curved sewing needle. First, sew the base of your ears so that they curve toward the inside.
Once that's done, we're going to sew the ear directly to the mesh or wefts of the wig. Section out the hair that will be covering the base of the ears and clip it out of the way. Be very careful sewing. You're going to be going through a lot of material, and if you're sewing on a wig head to keep the positioning correct, you're not always able to see the needle. As you sew, make sure you're stitching into the mesh or wefts of the wig for the most secure attachment. You can also stitch the ears at whatever angle you prefer. Some of our fawns have their ears angled down, some angle out to the side, and some angle up and back. The ear angle and placement is one way you can give visual cues about your character's personality. For example, Hazel is the group's protector, so her ears are always in a more alert position. When it's time to tie off, make sure you're tying a secure knot at least three times through the fabric of your ears. Now, just repeat the process on the other side. If you find our tutorials helpful, please consider liking our videos and subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out. For product links to the supplies we use in this video, check out the video description. And there we have it. The fawn ears are complete. Thanks for joining me through this process. 